Hi, welcome to uh, Waterus Facebook Live presentation of selecting the right fire pump for your application. I'm Matt Wolf, sales manager for Waterus Company. Um, I've been here for 21 years, started in uh, engineering, moved uh, through pump applications, and uh, now as a sales manager. Today we're going to walk through um, the process of selecting the right fire pump for your application. Um, first thing I want to do is uh, I'd like to thank the first responders, um, especially in the difficult times that we're in. Uh, we appreciate everything you do for, uh, for us. Um, so I'm coming here today uh, in our uh, Waterus University classroom. Um, this is uh, in South St. Paul, Minnesota, in our office and manufacturing facility. Um, we reside in a 210,000 square foot facility in which we machine machine, assemble, and test all of our products in-house. Um, so, the uh, first thing that I want to bring to your attention and that we recently uh, came out with is um, we have an industry leading seven year pump warranty. Um, previously it was five years, we increased, added on two years. Um, we came out with that on April 15th, so any pump that you buy from here on out will have the, uh, a standard seven year warranty. We're pretty excited about that. So following our agenda today, um, we're gonna go through a little bit of water as history, um, and then we'll go into uh, pump ratings, pump locations, fire pump selection, um, issues to consider when you're selecting your fire pump, and then we'll talk about the different, different pumps and the performances, um, the unique features of our pumps, um, touch on our ARF and industrial market pumps, um, pump accessories, and then uh, a little bit of marketing info. Um, feel free during the presentation to ask questions. Um, so we'll take uh, any questions you have. If I can't answer them right away, we'll have someone get back to you. Um, in a timely manner. So a little bit about Waterus. Uh, we're a 134 year old company. We, uh, CH Waterus started Waterus Engine Works in, in 1844 in Brantford, Ontario, Canada. Um, they started by building parts for sawmills and steam fire engines. In 1886, uh, we moved down to South St. Paul, Minnesota um, and uh, started building fire, steam fire engines and fire apparatus. Uh, we built apparatus up until uh, 1929. In 1929, we built our last fire apparatus, um, and we are now solely uh, solely focused on pumps. So, uh, and if, if you look in one of these pictures here, I think it's this one here. If you remember Jay Rott from a couple weeks ago, um, did a Facebook Live on uh, some service stuff. This is actually Jay right here, um, back in... Uh, back in the early 1900s. So along the way, um, throughout the 1900s, we had many innovations um, that are unique to Waterus. Uh, in 1955, we, we uh, <coughs> introduced flame-plated impeller hubs um, for our pumps. In the 1970s, we came out with the uh, ball-style transfer valve and also the chain drive transmission. Um, and we'll, we'll move, uh, or we'll talk about more about what those are and the importance of them and how they're different uh, later on. Um, and then in uh, 2002, we moved into our current facility, uh, or we added on to our, our facility, we added more manufacturing and office space, um, you know, to accommodate growing business. So um, here we are today in South St. Paul, and. Uh, in the uh, Waterus University classroom. So, <clears throat> um, going through the agenda, we'll go into uh, pump ratings. We'll touch on pump ratings and, and how that works. So, uh, all pumps are rated from draft. So, um, anything from your small pumps to your industrial pumps, the ratings that, that are on the tag, they're all rated from draft. So, a 1500 GPM pump is such as this is rated at a 10 foot lift so it's drafting 10 it has to it has to perform full capacity at a 10 foot lift of draft um, a 1750 pump is uh, 
is required to have a uh, eight foot lift. A 2000 GPM pump is a six foot lift. So they're all rated from draft. They have to draft that and make capacity. So <clears throat> all these fire pumps are centrifugal style pumps. Um, they differ from like a piston pump where a centrifugal style fire pump takes advantage of incoming pressure. So the pump only needs to build enough pressure to go out the discharge. If it has incoming pressure, it takes advantage of that. So um, for instance, on this pump, uh, you know, if you're uh, uh, coming off of a hot hydrant or something like a 100 PSI hydrant um, and you're required to have 200 PSI out your discharge, this pump only needs to make 100 PSI because um, it's taking advantage of that incoming pressure. So <clears throat> that's the advantage of a, of a uh, centrifugal fire pump versus, you know, like a uh, piston pump you might see. Um, piston pumps used as a... Uh, pump in a um, pressure washer or, uh, or some of the high pressure um, pumps that are on the market are uh, piston pumps and then uh, also some foam pumps are uh, piston pumps. <coughs> so going forward here uh, through our agenda, um, we'll, go, we'll go through pump locations. So, you know, there's, there's a <coughs> There's different locations and different ways to drive drive a pump. So you can have a midship style pump, um, which is a split shaft driven off the main drive line. You can have a PTO driven pump. Um, you can have a rear mount pump, and you can have a direct drive pump that is uh, mounted pump mounted right to the engine via a bell housing. So we'll start with split shaft pumps first. Um, so if you look at the diagram here of the uh, fire apparatus. Your engine's here, um, you know, typically your, your transmission, like an Allison transmission, 3,000 or 4,000 EVS transmission. Coming out of there is your drive shaft that goes to your rear wheels, um, to the rear differential. So the split shaft, um, the drive line goes into the waterous chain case, and then it goes to the rear differential. So if we move over to this pump here, this cutaway, this is our CM pump, it's a two-stage pump. Um, you're looking at the, uh, the rear of the pump, so on a split shaft pump, going back to the diagram, you're coming in here on the opposite side of this, so when it's in road mode, the shift collar is in a position that allows both drive shafts to spin on both sides of the pump. Um, so your rear differential will have power and you'll be able to drive down the road. When you stop and put that into pump gear, um, it disengages the rear shaft or the output shaft and, uh, and engages the chain for, to drive the pump. So, <clears throat> you know, the big advantage of a split shaft pump um, or split shaft driven pump, one of the big advantages is, is it utilizes the full torque and horsepower of the engine can be used to drive the pump. So um, the disadvantage of a split shaft is uh, that, <clears throat> that you don't have pump and roll capabilities. The truck has to be stopped stationary um, to, uh, to pump with it. So um, with that said, we offer a variety of our pumps are offered in split shaft or PTO driven. So, um, you know, we can drive, this is our CM pump. It's our two stage midship style pump. Um, we can drive this off of uh, with a split shaft or with a PTO. Um, the same with our CS pump, our single stage pump. This is our CSU 1500. This is actually the uh, best selling fire pump uh, in the country. Um, but <clears throat> we can drive this off of our off the main drive line with our C20 split shaft transmission, along with uh, uh, PTO drive it. And then we have other models of. Uh, pumps that we can either PTO drive, drive with a PTO or off of the split shaft. This is our CXS pump. This can also be driven off of uh, with a uh, C20 transmission. Um, we also have a CG pump, which is a smaller, smaller than our CX pump. Um, and we have an S100 pump that are both driven off of, uh, off of a, can be driven off of a PT or a split shaft, I'm sorry. Um, 
So, moving on from split shaft pumps, uh, we'll go into PTO pumps. So again, you got your chassis, your transmission, instead of uh, splitting that drive line down here, we're coming off of one of the PTO ports of like the LS transmission, um, and we're driving a pump. So, <clears throat> a lot of our pumps can be driven this way too. Um, there's, you know, multiple ways you can drive it. So we can drive our CM and CS pumps, CX, uh, CG, um, just a variety of our pumps we can run off of the PTO, we can PTO drive. Now with PTO driven pumps, the advantages are you can, uh, you can, uh, you can have pump and roll capabilities, which is big for uh, like wildland rigs or smaller rigs that need that pump and roll capability. Um, <clears throat> you have that with your PTO pumps because you're not utilizing that main drive line to drive your fire pump, you're using a PTO port with a hot shift and you can engage and disengage the pump on the go. Um, speaking of, of wildland and PTO stuff, um, we'll move over here. So we have, we have uh, two boxes or two uh, gear cases that we One is our K gear box. Um, that is on this guy here with our CP2 pump. So this is a K gear box, um, PTO driven pump. And then we also over here have a uh, P, we, it's our PA transmission. And this is a PTO um, driven transmission also. So the PA has a chain in it, similar to our uh, split shaft pumps. And the, uh, the K has, it's a, two helical cut gears in there um, to drive the pump. So um, just kind of, you know, there's, there's uh, different applications that require the pumps to be put in different positions or uh, um, different gear ratios and such. So um, that'll kind of dictate exactly what you want to do um, or what, what you need for a pump. Um, and then <clears throat> rear drive pumps. So. Again, um, this is our uh, Waterus TC20 PTO. Um, this PTO that, that we manufacture is uh, similar to our C20 transmission in that it's driven off of the main drive line, but it, in, instead of having the pump mounted right to the transmission, it has a rear output shaft and it allows you to push that pump all the way in the back so to have a rear drive transmission. So um, with a, you know, a lot of uh, different truck builders like using or like designing their trucks around maybe a rear mount pump. Um, we can rear mount just about any pump um, that we have utilizing a TC20 and then um, possibly a K gearbox on the, on the pump itself, you know, depending on driveline speeds and, uh, and uh, how fast you want your drivelines uh, going from the transmission back to the rear mount pump, but we can rear mount pump, or we can mount a, uh, you know, a large midship, a, C, a CM, um, a CS pump, uh, and then we have uh, some end suction pumps, CX pumps, S100 pumps, HL pumps, and we can, you know, we can rear mount any of those pumps utilizing the TC20. Um, Moving on from the rear mount pumps, uh, direct engine mounted pumps. So <clears throat> we do have a couple standard models, or we have a few standard models of direct engine mounted pumps that we build here at Waterus. Um, one is uh, one is uh, our PV18 series pumps. They are util using a uh, a uh, Briggs and Stratton 18 horsepower gasoline engine, and we have four different pump ends that can go on that. Um, and then we have our E500 series pumps that are, uh, we have an E501 and an E511, and they're uh, driven with a Kubota diesel. And those I call our, our stock pumps, I guess. Um, but we, again, we can basically take any one of our pumps and drive it directly off an engine using a um, correct adapter, bell housing adapter and such. Um, you know, we can drive, uh, Anything from this small CPK2 pump, um, we can put a bell housing on the opposite side of the transmission, mount it directly to an engine, 
and we can go all the way up to uh, to um, a CM pump. Um, we can actually do uh, our CRU2 pump, which is a 4,000 GPM industrial pump. We can mount that directly to an engine and uh, have a direct engine mount pump. Um, so I got a question here. Um, why are there so many transmission ratios to choose from? Well, the reason why there's so many transmission ratios, so we have ratios on our C20 transmissions, we have ratios on our K gearbox, and we have ratios in our PA transmission. And the reason being is that um, most applications nowadays are using uh, diesel engines that are, that are uh, <clears throat> governed at 2200 RPMs. So um, we need to speed up that we need to speed up that speed to run our pumps. You know, some of these are four, five, six, seven thousand RPM uh, impeller speeds to be able to get to the rating you want. Um, so, based on the rating and the um, horsepower available and the governed speed of the engine, uh, we will uh, will help you select a ratio that works best. So. Um, we're gonna move on, so uh, going into fire pump selection um, questions. So fire pump selection questions, um, there's a lot of questions that through my time in applications, as applications engineer, um, we kind of learned a lot of the typical questions that come up or typical questions that need to be answered in order to make sure you're getting the right pump for uh, for your application. So um, number one is what will the pump be used for? Is this going to be a um, large municipal pumper? Is this going to be a brush truck, an aerial, um, a tanker, um, you know, a small, you know, like 5500 series chassis? What's the pump going to be used for is the main question. Um, after that, you know, do you need a single stage pump or a two stage pump? So. We'll talk about this when we get into the uh, to the other portion of uh, pumps and performance. But um, you know, two stage pumps are uh, have a volume and pressure mode. So, for instance, our CMU pump that's right here is uh, our two stage pump. We can rate it up to twenty two fifty GPM, um, and in pressure mode, it can do six hundred GPM at six hundred psi. This is the only fire pump in the industry that's capable of doing 600 at 600. Um, I believe the next closest competitor can do uh, 350 GPM at 600 PSI. Um, this pump is also the only pump that is spec in New York City because of the uh, high pressure. And when we get into pump applications too, we'll uh, talk about the CMU CGV pump where we're piggybacking another pump onto the back of the two-stage pump, essentially making it a three-stage pump and reaching even higher pressures for high-rise pumping. Um, so we can go to, uh, to number three is um, what rating is needed? Do you need, you know, based on your application again, if it's a brush truck and you need a 300 GPM pump, um, you know, say an F550, Chassis, you want a 300 GPM PTO driven pump. CPK2 is perfect for that. Um, it's, a, it's a small envelope, you can fit it anywhere, um, and it's capable of 300 GPM, perfect for a small brush rig. Um, when you're talking um, a, maybe a Type 3, uh, I, I call it Type 3 Cal Fire style truck, um, those are uh, 500 GPM two-stage pumps that are PTO driven because they need that pump and roll capability. Um, you know, we have our CPK3 pump here. This is a, a two-stage 500 GPM pump that can be PTO driven. Um, you know, we have, uh, again, our, our two-stage CMU, our uh, single-stage CSU. Uh, you know, if you're going up to industrial stuff, um, we'll move over here. Um, we have our 4,000 GPM CRU2 pump. So, you know, we kind of have a pump for every, every application, um, all ratings. And then, so the next thing is, is uh, 
where do you want your pump mounted? What's the best location? So, you know, we talked about earlier, we talked about split shaft, PTO driven and rear mount and direct drive pumps. You know, if you need your pump uh, at the rear of the truck, you'll, you'll use our uh, TC20 with, uh, depending on the rating, um, with, you know, maybe a CSU or a CX or an S100 pump. Um, you know, what location is best? Midship style pump is uh, pretty popular. Our CSU pump, you know, midship style is, uh, is probably about 70% of uh, what, we, what we do. Um, so going from there, uh, from location, um, I guess the next thing is, is do you need pump and roll capabilities? Now when we talk about PTO pumps, um, they're capable of pump and roll capable of pump and roll. So um, if you need pump and roll capabilities, a 1500 GPM pump, um, you know, maybe you do a, uh, <clears throat> a CXPA, a CXSPA pump, uh, PTO driven up to 1500 GPM, um, small, smaller in size, um, you know, versus doing a uh, split shaft pump. Just moving on, um, We'll go to uh, next one here, issues to consider when selecting a pump. So one thing you need to know is, is do you need high rise pumping? High rise pumping is for, uh, for, for like skyscrapers, large cities. Um, you know, again, our CMU pump, our two stage pump um, is perfect for high rise pumping because it can do that 600 GPM at 600 PSI, push um, a large volume of water up, um, pretty high through some stand pipes. Um, if you don't need high rise pumping, you just want a single stage pump, uh, midship mounted, very efficient, uh, CSU pump would be the way to go. Um, another question when selecting a pump is uh, how many discharges do you need and what size discharges are you, do you need and what, what ones are you gonna use the most? So <clears throat> I guess, I, a common theme that I seen working in pump applications was, you know, everyone thinks bigger is better. Um, they want the largest they the largest pump they can get with the horsepower and torque available. Um, so, take you know if you're doing some pump comparisons, uh, we'll say our midship style CSU pump. Um, this has a dual eye impeller, so it's very efficient compared to an end suction pump. Um, so our, our S100 pump is a, uh, is a 2000 GPM uh, pump that's good for aerial applications because it can move a large amount of water um, for an aerial application, but it's not as efficient in lower flow. So if you're gonna do, say it, you want a uh, 2000 GPM pump and you're gonna, you're gonna run maybe one inch bumper lines off of that, um, flowing 100 GPM 95% of the time, then I would suggest doing a uh, CM or CS pump versus doing an S100 because, you know, and Jay talked about in the last Facebook Live, talked about pump cavitation. Pump cavitation occurs and destroys the pump. It occurs when you run low flows through, you know, like a large volute, large body, volute, um, large impellers, you start to cavitate the pump as it heats up and then it starts causing damage. So, um, got another question here. What's the max GPM out of a CSU in a PTO configuration? So we can do up to 1500 GPM off of the PTO. So we can run a CSU or a CMU or a, a CX off of a PTO at 1500 GPM. Um, so I think that that answers that. Um, so we talked about how many discharges and how and what size discharges will be used the most. So that um, it's kind of one of the common things that that comes up. Um, moving on from there, um, some more considerations. Um, again, we got we got uh, size of discharges. Do you need a high rise pump? Um, what rating you need, um, what other apparatus do you have? So if you're a large, large fleet department that has, um, 
you know, tankers and pumpers and aerials and, and that. Um, maybe you don't need a two-stage pump, or maybe you're, uh, you have specific stations that are high-rise stations and you do need a two-stage pump. So um, do, you need, do you need that um, two-stage pump, or do you want to do a single-stage pump, or are you building a brush truck where it's a uh, small PTO pump? Um, do you, and then another consideration, I guess, is uh, are you going to primary? Are you a rural or urban area where you're going to primarily um, get your water from a pressurized hydrant or a tanker, or are you going to be drafting most of the time? Um, we got another question here. Um, can your two-stage pump be used for high-rise firefighting? Yes, that's um, one of the benefits of the two-stage pump. Um, is uh, is using it for high-res firefighting. So, um, on both of these pumps, these both these uh, large pumps, we offer packing and mechanical seals. So, um, I don't have any examples here of of each, but um, you know, packing is adjustable. You can adjust the pump packings. Um, there's a drip rate to them. And then a mechanical seal is a self-adjusting mechanical seal that requires uh, virtually no maintenance. Um, and uh, you know, if you take care of your product, it shouldn't shouldn't fail. Um, so, <clears throat> so but moving on to uh, to I guess we'll talk about single stage ver or uh, single eye impellers versus uh, dual eye impellers. So. Our CM and our CS series pumps you use a uh, dual eye impeller impeller shaft, or dual eye impeller. Um, our end suction pumps like our CX, S100, CRs, um, they all use a single single eye impeller. So um, what the difference is, is, and I'll show you here is, so this is an impeller out of our CSU pump. So you got you know your your veins, but so your inlet sides. On this pump, and this impeller is from this pump here, you got your intakes on both sides. So when that water comes in, it splits and it comes in both sides of the impeller and discharges out both sides of the impeller. It's it's using this impeller to, you know, it's max capability. It's uh it's the most efficient use of uh use of water and the most efficient way to increase water pressure. Now you take, this is uh, an impeller out of our CX pump, and this is an end suction pump, and we'll go over here to our CX. So this impeller's in here, um, and it's facing this way. So you get all your water from one side. You're pushing all your water through the single, single side impeller out the discharge side. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing this. It's just that the dual eye impellers are... Uh, are more efficient at moving water and increasing pressure. So um, we'll go through. Uh, so I, I showed you the <coughs> dual eye impeller, single eye impeller, and then our our two stage pump uses. Um, it also gets water from both sides when you're in volume, and then in pressure, it uses both impellers to uh, increase the water pressure. So. It's kind of the difference between a uh, a uh, single eye impeller and a, a dual eye impeller. Um, I'd say that you know, in any application, um, a dual eye impeller is a is a better better use of your water um, than uh, than a single eye impeller. So um, the most the two most efficient pumps that we have when we talk about pump efficiency is our CM pump. And our CS pump. Um, not that any of the other ones are 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 not good performers. They are. Um, it's just they're the most efficient. They they uh, use the most of the power and uh, torque and uh, and the most the best use of water. Um, <clears throat> so I think we get another question. Um, what do you sell more of, single or two stage pumps? We currently. You know, we used to sell, you know, back in the, back before my time, um, we used to sell uh, primarily two-stage pumps. And the reason being is because they were gasoline-driven um, <coughs> apparatus. 
and you could you can get more uh, get more pressure out of a two-stage pump at a lower RP engine RPM using less horsepower and less torque and less speed than uh, a single stage pump so um, you, you can run your your truck at a lower RPM um, and get that pressure and you still can do this with with their diesel engines but um, yeah now we kind of switched to I guess that the industry kind of switched to um, primarily single stage pumps <clears throat> except uh, you know the large cities that require the two stage for high-rise pumping um, but even without high-rise pumping the two stage pumps are still going to be more efficient at at lower flows um, if you look at their impellers um, you know it's using these two smaller impellers versus one big impeller um, where where it's still uh, you know less risk of cavitation in that um, lower speeds and stuff so um, that's that's kind of the reason to suggest a two-stage pump um, you know I guess if if all things were equal and and uh, and and the cost was the same and stuff I, all day long I would recommend a two-stage pump um, just because of the efficiency at, at uh, lower flows and at uh, the uh, high at the high pressures um, so one thing about our two-stage pump another thing I'll tell you about is um, so this is a pig it's used in uh, it's used in the uh, industrial applications for uh, for pipeline cleaning at uh, refineries like oil refineries so <clears throat> what they do is and the reason this is called a pig is is this is a uh, this piece is put into the the oil pipes or the pipelines at the refinery to clean them out so there's a bunch of carbide tip tips on here and what they do is they put these in the pipeline and then they use water pressure to push this pig through the pipeline and as it turns it's scraping the size of the pipeline and it's uh, cleaning it out and the reason it's called a pig is because as it turns it squeals so but that being said um, we use we sell a ton of our uh, CMU pumps for uh, industrial applications in refineries for pigging and um, it's the only pump that the pigging industry trusts um, trust to to use in that application um, they uh, they beat the hell out of these pumps and uh, this is the only pump that they found that can uh, withstand the rigors of the pigging industry um, I know that when these these companies come in to do pipeline cleaning there's a huge expense to the uh, to the refinery to be shut down so they want to use the best use of time and uh, want reliable products so this is the pump that they choose to use for the pigging industry um, all around the world um, they use our CM pump so um, we kind of went through the issues to consider when selecting a pump so we'll go into pumps and performance so when we uh, when we talk about pumps we have pumps that um, you know all the way again from our PB18 small pumps um, 300 GPM CP2 pumps and uh, all the way up to our 4000 GPM industrial pumps so um, getting another question here do we offer high pressure pumps so there is a there is some companies out there that offer these high pressure pumps they're piston pumps usually um, you know and they're capable of uh, low flows and high pressures um, we don't we don't offer a extremely high pressure pump in that application now we do offer a you know ARF pumps that we have up to 1,350 psi, but um, you know we have this as a, a high-pressure firefighting pump, and then our CP5, which we'll get into here shortly. Um, so pumps and performance. So we'll kind of go through the line of pumps here that Waterus offers uh, for municipal and industrial and in ARF applications. 
and we'll go to our CP2 pump is a 300 GPM pump, um, small small application pump. Now, um, all of our pumps at, per NFPA are rated at their rating at 150 psi um, up to you know to the 3,000 GPM, and then we rate them at 100 psi. Um, and then, like I talked about earlier, we have the the draft and the lift that you have to follow. So a 10 foot lift um, for anything 1500 and under. Um, moving on from our 300 GPM pump, single stage pump, we'll go out this, we talked about a little while ago is our CP3 pump. It's a two stage 500 GPM, uh, like a type three fire apparatus, pump and roll capabilities, um, two stage so you get the high pressure and the flow and uh, pump and roll for uh, wildland applications. Um, one of them that I don't have in here is our CL pump. Our CL pump is, a, is similar to our CP2. It, it's a little bit larger, um, driven the same way though, um, and it's a 500 GPM pump. Moving on from there is a CG pump. We, uh, our CG pump is a 750 GPM pump. We rate that at 500 and 700 GPM. Um, it's a little bit larger than the CL pump and we can PTO drive that or drive that off of a split shaft. Uh, moving on from there, um, we have our HLU pump, which uh, we can rate at 1,000, 1,250, or 1,500 GPM. Um, this pump is unique in that <clears throat> we originally designed this for uh, European firefighting applications because it's a, we call it an HLU pump or high-low pump because it's capable of high and low pressure and simultaneous high-low pressure. Um, so in volume, it's capable of 1,000, 1,250, or 1,500. Um, so more recently in the uh, United States, we've seen um, more and more applications that may require this or that want this type of uh, simultaneous high-low pump um, rear mount, and it's usually for uh, wildland applications. So this is this is uh, a pump that we've always had. We kind of re-engineered it for the U.S. market and uh, you know it's starting to take off for a wild a wildland pump. Um, moving on from there we have our CX pump. Oh I got a question. Um, do end suction pumps of the same rating class require higher RPMs and dual eye impeller pumps to achieve the same flow and performance? Um, so would a 1500 GPM end suction pump require a higher RPM to get the rating compared to a 1500 GPM dual eye impeller pump? Um, I want to say, I don't want to say yes or no, I'll say probably uh, the dual eye impeller pump is more efficient. Um, so you'll be able to achieve that, you know, with less horsepower and torque in a dual eye impeller pump than a single eye impeller end suction pump. Um, just a reminder, we do have all of our pump performance sheets on our website, so you can go into our website and say if, that question if you want to look at um, the pump performance sheet on a CSU 1500 and compare it to the performance of a C, CXS uh, 1500. Um, that should kind of get, uh, get you the answer. Um, so talking about our CX pump, this is a you know one of our pumps that we can rate anywhere from 750 up to 1500 GPM. It can be split shaft driven or it can be uh, PTO driven. Um, this is uh, becoming more and more popular because of the small envelope. You can fit it in a pretty small pump house um, compared to a midship style pump, and it's you know it's a, a very trustworthy pump. We can drive it with a chain drive or a gear drive. Um, so moving on from the CX. Uh, like I, I talked a lot about the CSU and the CMU, so this is our CSU. Um, this we can rate from 750 up to 2250. Um, <clears throat> some of the uh, midship pumps, some of the uh, competitors' midship pumps, they only go up to 2000 GPM. Waters, we can go up to 2250 from draft. Um, CSU and then CMU, two stage pump, again, 750 up to 2250. Um, GPM for these guys and then uh, another pump that I don't have in here is our S100 pump uh, we can rate at 1500 1750 or 2000 GPM that is a uh, end suction pump that can be 
PTO driven or split shaft driven. Um, and again, we can rate that up to 2000. It's a great pump for like an aerial application because uh, it moves a large amount of water and you can fit it in a pretty small, uh, small pump house. So <clears throat> um, that's kind of our pumps and performance section uh, here. Now going on to the water as unique features. The uh, first thing I'll talk about is our flame plated impeller hubs. So on each of these impellers, you may notice um, uh, the brass impeller, bronze impeller, and then there's a silver color on here. This is a tungsten carbide flame plating that we do to the impeller hub. Um, the impeller hub's usually the first thing that uh, starts wearing in your pump or on your impeller will be the hub. Um, what this tungsten carbide flame plating does it, is it, it hardens the outside of this and it adds up to four times the life to this impeller. Um, you know, as you can imagine by looking at this, this is not a cheap part. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we're the only comp pump company that does flame plating, um, but we flame plate the impeller hub to add that life to it. We have it on our CS pumps, we have it on our CM pumps, we have it on our end suction pumps. Um, you know, and it's, it actually is standard on anything 1500 GPM and up. Um, moving on from flame plated impeller hubs, um, another unique feature we have is these are our, our wear rings. Um, so we have a labyrinth style wear ring, um, call it labyrinth style because of all the, uh, the ways that it, it prevents water from getting through. So when you're talking about say the CS impeller, um, and J again, Jay talked about pump cavitation and what that can do to your, to your pump and how it kind of destroys the inside of the pump if you're running low flows and, and uh, letting that pump recirculate. Well, <clears throat> what water wants to do when it comes out the discharge side of the impeller, if you don't have a discharge open, what water wants to do is recirculate back to the, back to the intake side of the pump. So we have these labyrinth style wear rings and it kind of creates a maze to get back so it prevents the water from or tries to prevent the water from getting back to the in, intake side of the pump so um, it makes it more efficient and and helps stop that cavitation and uh, this is a you know, the labyrinth style wear ring is something that's unique to water us also um, so going on from there uh, we'll talk about the sealed outboard bearing now I don't have one here um, but <clears throat> moving over to this pump so the outboard side of the pump is a pump, the side that I'm standing on here. It'll be the front of the pump. Um, so you have your impeller shaft running through the, through the uh, pump and on this side you have your bearing housing. Well, inside that bearing housing, we have a sealed outboard bearing. Um, that is unique to Waterus. We're the only ones to do that. Um, before we had a sealed outboard bearing, um, you know, it was a greasable automotive style bearing. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, everybody, maybe a lot of people think that, well, I can grease it so it must be better. Well, these are really long life, um, minimal wear bearings in here um, that we run, the sealed outboard bearing. And what we found when we switched from the automotive style greasable bearing to the, to the sealed bearing is, um, when we looked at it, there were more contaminants being introduced through that greaser from the grease gun than there were from anything else in there. So eliminating, you know, having to grease that bearing increases the life of that bearing and you shouldn't have problems with that. Um, so that kind of uh, going on, um, going on to the, uh, talking about the C20s and the midship style pumps. Um, we have a separable impeller shaft. So if you, if you uh, take a look th at this cutaway, um, you look in here, right here where the transmission bolts up to the pump, this can be unbolted and this shaft is separable so you can remove the pump transmission without having to remove the entire pump from the truck. So, um, you know, that's an advantage when you're doing maintenance. If you have an issue, you can remove the pump transmission and, you know, it's easier than having to remove the entire pump from the truck. Um, so from there, uh, another unique feature to Waterus is, uh, I don't 
you can't really see it on here, but we have a ball style transfer valve on our two stage pumps. So, <clears throat> you know, the transfer valve needs to be, it rotates um, when you change from uh, volume to pressure or pressure to volume. So the old style, the old style uh, transfer valve that we used to use and that our competition still uses is a, uh, we call it a can and sleeve style um, transfer valve. So it's, it's like a can that rotates inside a sleeve. We used to have that and then um, we found that we switched to a, uh, a ball style transfer valve that has floating seals. Um, so as you turn that valve, it doesn't stick, it doesn't, doesn't get caught up, you don't have, uh, you have less failures and it's because the, uh, the, balls, the ball will uh, turn easily in there and the seal actually is uh, kind of spring loaded so it, it, uh, <coughs> it floats, so it has a floating seal and uh, you can move, we, we actually tested this and you can put one and a half pounds of sand and one gallon of water through that transfer valve and it'll still operate um, as normal. One of the other things uh, that our chain drive transmissions have, um, you know, I talked about a little bit about chain drive and the gear drive. So we're the only ones in the industry that have a chain drive transmission. Um, the reason we use a chain drive, um, a couple reasons. First of all, as you can see here, you have 270 degrees of engagement from that chain and the uh, the gear on um, both the uh, the drive and the driven gear. There's 270 degrees of engagement versus one or two teeth in a gear driven. Um, so it's the uh, most efficient transfer of power. And then also with that, um, you don't have gear whine. So these are very quiet um, compared to a uh, gear driven pump. So uh, for example, if you uh, stand next to a truck with a water S pump in it and, and on the other side there's a, a competitor's pump in it and you start both pumps up you don't know which is which once they start running you can definitely tell which one's chain driven and which one is gear driven just by the noise that they create um, ours are very quiet very quiet pumps um, so the uh, one of the other things that I wanted to uh, stress that that uh, <clears throat> I think I brought up before is all of our castings are sourced in the United States. Um, so that being said, we don't have supply issues um, that may arise with uh, uh, different things going on overseas. Um, so we source all of our castings in the United States. We machine, assemble, and test everything in house here. So um, with that, we have the best lead times in the industry. 95% um, of our parts orders ship out in 48 hours or less. Um, I, have, I have seen um, a CSU pump be built up and uh, or built, assembled, and tested and crated in uh, one day. So if there are situations that you know um, arise like that, truck down situation where you need a new center section, um, we, we are capable of uh, turning things around uh, pretty quickly around here and, and we attribute that to our Made in the USA content and then um, with that we, we uh, don't have quality issues that may arise from uh, using foreign castings. Um, and then just again, um, another one of our, our highlights is, uh, going back, here is our seven year warranty. So the best warranty in the, in the industry, um, full seven year uh, standard warranty on, uh, on water as pumps. Um, last, last thing I'll talk about here um, is uh, our ARF and industrial pumps I'll talk, talk about. So we have a variety of ARF and industrial pumps. Uh, for ARF, we have our CRU and CZ pumps. Um, and then we have our CPK4UH and CPK5 pump. Um, these are all ARF pumps. Uh, I'll talk about the CPK5 real quick. Um, this was a pump that we designed a few years ago and it was designed exclusively for the, uh, for the Air Force, uh, for an ARF truck. 
and it's we have a CP5 pump that does 320 GPM at 1350 PSI. This was designed specifically for that application. It's the only pump in the industry that can meet those standards and meet that spec for the Air Force. Um, so that's that's the ARF portion of it. Um, industrial portion, um, we do have our CRU2 pump in here that I'll talk about quickly. Um, this pump we can rate anywhere from 2,000 to 4,000 GPM um, at 150 PSI, and that is from draft. So uh, you know, a, a large pump, um, industrial applications usually, uh, refineries, trucks maybe where they need um, need the large water and they have uh, they have the water available. So um, that's uh, one of our one of our newer industrial style pumps. Um, we'll move on to pump accessories. Um, now there's a lot of pump accessories so I won't touch on all of them. I'll touch on the, uh, the newest and latest and greatest that we have. First one I'll talk about here is our new intake relief valve. We introduced this. Uh, <clears throat> this came out uh, a couple months ago. Um, we had a FDIC 2019. Um, so it's a pilotless intake relief valve, uh, pump mounted, comes preset at 125 PSI, fully adjustable. Um, you know, it, it's a, a pretty simple, uh, a simpler system than our, our uh, pilot driven uh, relief valves. Um, the advantage of using our relief valve over our competitors is that if you order it from us on your pump, it comes with a seven year pump warranty like your pump has, so this intake relief valve will have a seven year warranty on it. Um, going on from that, uh, we'll go to our pressure governors. Now, these are a brand new product that we technically have not released yet. They will be released soon. Um, we have an electronic veneer throttle and then a push button. Um, so again, these are not released yet, but they will be soon. Um, they're a brand new product for us. Uh, the advantage of ours are over our competitors is that uh, ours are much more accurate. The plus and minus on the pressures and RPMs are are more accurate than uh, than our competitors. So we're uh, you know you'll see a news bulletin or a sales bulletin come out when these do become available, but uh, they should be coming out very soon. Um, another product that uh, that. You know, if you order it with your pump, um, you know, it comes with the pump and, uh, and it's a waterless product and uh, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, <clears throat> and then again, our seven year warranty, um, you know, we're excited about that. Um, outside of that, I'll talk a little bit about, to end, I'll, I'll uh, um, move on to the, uh, to the marketing info. So um, finishing up here, uh, something that we recently added was the Waterus University. And Waterus University is online on our website, waterusco.com. You can click on Waterus University. You have access to our 3D interactives, water flow videos. Um, as you see here, you can watch the videos of water flow through a single stage pump, two stage pump, the difference between an end suction and a uh, dual eye impeller pump. Um, you can uh, actually request to get some posters. We send out free posters, so you can go on there and request uh, free posters. Um, there's information on talking points, um, frequently asked questions, uh, and then we also have a friction loss app that you can download to your phone if you don't have it already. It's a free uh, download, um, so it's, it's like the little friction loss cards, but it's on your phone. Um, and then also online we have uh, My Waterist. Now we just added on um, to my water is to allow it, it'll allow you to go in and uh, if you have an account with us you can view all your orders you can uh, look at past orders current orders um, invoices uh, and then if you know if you're an end user you can uh, you can go in there and you can enter your serial number and it'll pull up parts list drawings um, of your pump and then it'll it'll allow you to view any current orders you have on that pump 
um, past orders you have on that pump based on the serial number, and it'll allow you to order new parts right through, um, right through the website um, if you wish to go that route. Um, so that's kind of exciting. It's a it's a something newer to us to be allowed to uh, allow you to uh, order parts right through the website. Um, outside of that, um, follow us on uh, on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook um, on our website waterscode.com. And uh, you know, if there's any questions that you have, feel free to um, contact us through our service department, our sales department. Um, you know, if there's any questions that went unanswered, we can certainly follow up. Anything you have, feel free to reach out. Um, and, uh, well, thank you for your time, and uh, let us know if you have any questions. Thanks.